What's good, YouTube? It's Mirabo Spinner back in another video. So there was actually a regional tournament with about 340 people in China, in Dalian. And it's kind of interesting to see that there are a bunch of decks, first of all, that did well as they normally do. Things like Mr. Dragon Link, which happened to win, as well as the Shizu Tier Limits, which are a powerhouse in the OCG, especially because they have Chaos Ruler, which is just crazy in the deck. We can see that Rescue Ace is doing quite well. Random, Labyrinth, and Runic, and Branded, and the... Grass Super Heavy Samurai stuff because they still have the Super Heavy Samurai Scarecrow as well as two copies of that Grass is Greener, which is an absolutely crazy deck. But the thing that really caught my attention especially was the fact that an anti-meta stun, aka meta beat deck, actually happened to get top 16. So, like, you can see these other decks are kind of standard, and the fact that Fenrir is banned in the OCG means that they don't really have to deal with cash tier anymore. So that's why a lot of tier limits decks and like graveyard based decks like dragons have made a heavy resurgence. But the thing is with the meta B deck, that kind of caught me by surprise because I guess this is a good way for the deck to be played right now. And just expanding on this, it's because of the fact that everything's kind of graveyard based. So playing a bunch of cards here, you can see in this image for their deck, playing cards like Banish of the Radiance, Fossil Dina, as well as Inspector Border is actually quite annoying for decks like that to get rid of. Whereas in the TCG, we still have Cash Tira, so this deck probably doesn't have a great matchup against Cash Tira, a great matchup in the metagame. But that being said, I still thought it was interesting, and I thought it was something we'd explore. You can take a look at their deck. They're maxing out on Inspector Border. It's a little hard to see because this image quality is so low, but there's three Fossil Diner as well, two copies of Banish of the Radiance. And then they're playing two Pot of Duality, one Pot of Desires, and then the one Pot of a Prosperity, which is already limited in the OCG, which is why they're not maxing out on copies, because I would imagine that you want to dig for stuff in this deck. And they actually have three copies of Card of Demise, which we only have one copy in the TCG, unfortunately. They're also playing two copies of Time Tearing Morganite, which is a really interesting card, because when this card resolves and you're able to see next turn, you're probably going to win the game, because you're drawing two cards every draw phase, and you're also able to double Normal Summon. So being able to ins Inspector Board or Normal Summon, then Normal Summon a Fossil Dino is pretty devastating. And then the thing that I thought was hilarious is that they're playing three copies of Necro Valley, which is obviously insane against every graveyard-based deck, like Dragons and Tier Limits, and two copies of Royal... Uh, Royal Tribute, which says both players send all their monsters in their hands to the graveyard while you control a Necro Valley. So that's just absolutely insane. And with the power of the pots, you can quickly dig for whichever missing piece that you are in your opening hand and hopefully get to resolve this FTK combo. It's basically like Eradicator for monsters. So that's kind of nuts. Not to mention they'd be locked under Necro Valley. And they're also playing interesting equip spells, Moon Mirror Shield, Mage Power, and this spell card, um, I believe it's called Arms Collection or something like that, which is Trap, rather, that allows you to add any equip spell from your deck to your hand and then allows you to equip it to a monster if you control one. Also seeing two copies of Deck Lockdown is another way to stun their opponent. A copy of Burning Mirror Force is a copy of Mirror Force, regular Mirror Force, protecting their weak monsters like Fossil Dina. Three copies of a Compulse, one copy of Punishment, one Rivalry, one Skill Drain, which is back in one in the OCG, three Solemn Judgments, two Solemn Solemn Strike and one Solemn Warning. And then side deck, they're playing Shifters and Standard Stuff, Max C, Wing Dragon of Raw, two copies of Iron Wall, Dark Ruler, Even Leaves, and then the Sinister, uh, the Snake thingy, the Serpent, like, Waking the Dragon. So that's why they're playing a bunch of fusions. And I actually took this to an unrated and wanted to see how it was like in the TCG. So I'll show you guys what modifications we made. All right, guys, so this is a deck that we sort of tweaked a little bit. You can see it's very like the one that got top 16 in that tournament in the OCG, but we're playing, instead of the two and three copies of Card of Demise because it's limited, we're actually adding on the Pot of Prosperities, which happened to be at three, whereas it's in one in the OCG. And the rest of the list is fairly standard. I decided to add some more Solemns as well, just to test it out and two skill drains because of the fact that it's at three in the TCG. So why not give it a try instead of the Mirror Forces? Side deck, I figured it's a side hack. Heavy cash hate because the deck is just like a very bad matchup. But I wanted to test this out and see how good it is in the actual TCG meta. At least play one game and see if the deck is any good. If it's a potential contender for post uh, Duelist Nexus, if any of these cards are able to actually whittle down our opponent's decks that are playing things like Revolution Synchron, which are heavily graveyard based. So, yeah, let's take a look at the replay that I played and see how the deck actually fares out. 
All right, so we started off here losing the die roll, which is a very bad sign. Our opponent's playing Dragon Link, and just looking at this hand, uh, I don't know if it could really break a full-on Dragon Link board, especially if they set up Branded Beast, being able to pop our stuff with the spears and also potentially a Boral and Savage Dragon and the Boral and the Link Dragon as well. Pot of Prosperity and Duality is an amazing combo because you can dig for nine cards deep. If we went first, I'm pretty sure we would have just won because these pods could just be traps and then summon like a Banisher or a Fossil Dina, set a Compulse. Banisher of the Radiance is a lot like uh, a Rise Heart right now, which is kind of nuts because it's basically like a normal summonable <laughs> Rise Heart, which is pretty crazy. This card was very powerful back in the day as well. It's also playable in Edison format, so fun things to note. I know it comes in Ultimate Rare as well as Super Rare in the DR packs. It's really interesting. So our opponent goes... Full combo. They're ending in the standard board here, Borowin, plus like heavily spears. So we're going to go ahead and pros like desperately and see what we can dig into. And <laughs> it doesn't look too great. We've got two Solemns, Compulse. Decide to take the uh, punishment because we have the Compulse, which can deal with the Borowin dragon who can't be popped by a card effects or by battle but you can use a simple compulse to get rid of it but unfortunately this heretic seal is kind of annoying so the necro valley is not really going to do anything we can't really activate it or just get bounced digging here taking a look at what we want uh, they're not great so i think we just end up taking the mage power on some chance that we survive until next turn so we can like normal summon a banisher or a fossil designer and start beating down but i decided to set the fossil designer just desperately to live <laughs> and then in the end phase, you can see that they're going to go ahead and use the seal to bounce back their own ravine and then get the effect to summon out a magma. Then they're going to be able to use the Boral End as well to at least resurrect the free rocket. And yeah, from there, it's pretty much game. So I'm not entirely convinced that can go second. We scoop immediately there. Okay, we go first. This should be a little better. We're going to go first. Wow, this hand is quite amazing. Going to go ahead and activate duality. And yep, we got the FTK basically, especially against Dragon Link. So we're going to go ahead and take that road tribute, activate the Necro Valley. It doesn't matter if we don't have any monsters. Neither will they. And yeah, that looks like that entire monster hand is going to get discarded. So we're going to go to the next game. <laughs> Uh, so I don't know if this is a deck you want to play in a, a 10 round tournament. Maybe at a local if you want to piss everyone off and make enemies, but okay, we're going second again. This does not look good, especially with these three monsters that we just do not want to see. We didn't see any of our Dark Rulers, no Rageki, Dark Hole, no Board Breakers. I guess Wing Dragon of Raw Spear Mode might have helped a little bit, but I don't know. It's uh, <laughs> not great when the seal also gets the effect when it's tributed, so yeah. I don't think this deck can really compete, especially when it already has probably a horrendous cash tier matchup. Now with Dragons going second, I think it's even worse. I think this deck would be a lot better going into a metagame with heavy graveyard based, especially in like a tier format, which OCG seems to be in, where tier is still tier one. They're going to go ahead and also rip the Pot of Prosperity, which is like the one card that we really needed to dig for something to break this board. <laughs> and on top of that, they're able to set up the full combo here with the Boral Old Savage Dragon. And yeah, I think we just can't do anything. So <laughs> yeah, okay, guys, I went ahead and tested this deck so you didn't have to. I think in the TCG, it's not that great. But maybe you guys can prove me wrong and somehow make this deck a little more better than it currently is if there's any way to actually incorporate potentially the cast tier cards. I actually think Time Tearing Morganite is a really, really powerful card. And the moment that it does able to see play in any deck, it will be insane. So we're just waiting for the right deck to be able to play it in. So yeah. Anyways, I thought it was interesting how this deck got top 16. If you guys have any comments or ways that we could potentially make stun good again, in 2023 definitely let us know in the comments below it's one of my most favorite decks from the edison format so yeah it'd be cool to see it make a resurgence but until then i think uh we'll see you guys in the next video because i'm done playing this deck i think everyone's gonna hate me if i play this anymore <laughs> i'll see you guys <laughs>